How's it going everyone? David from DoD Media. Today I'm going to be reviewing the Sunwell FB22 flexible LED panel. I'm going to show you why I think I would use this light in a studio setting and for corporate work. Let's go. So first of all, I'd like to say thank you to Soonwell for reaching out and sending me the light as a sample to give an honest review. The agreement, as with all of the gear reviews that I do, is that I don't accept payments for reviews. I accept a free sample and then I decide whether I like the product or not. And if I like the product, I'll do a review of it. If I don't like the product, I'll send it back and say, no thanks, I don't want to recommend that. So hopefully this review will help you figure out if the Soonwell 2x1 flexible LED panel, it's got to have a shorter name, let's just call it the Soonwell. This will help you figure out if the Soonwell is something that you want to use in your lighting setups or not. Now Soonwell actually sent me the previous model version of this light, but for all intents and purposes, the product is the same, the output is the same, the light is the same. The only difference is that the case is smaller and the frame that you can mount the light to folds up a little bit better. Now when it comes to lighting, I'm pretty much sorted. I've got two Aperture 120Ds, and I have an Aperture 300D just to cover any of my studio needs, to cover any corporate interview needs and any kind of creative shoot needs. And if I needed something else, then I would probably just look at renting a couple of extra lights for the shoot. But the one thing, the one thing that I always struggle with is getting soft overhead lighting. Now, the reason that I struggle with this is that, for example, here in my studio, the ceilings aren't typically tall studio ceilings. They're, I don't know, they're about two meters 20. It's about seven foot. And so fitting a light above me, plus a modifier that's big enough to give me a nice diffused, soft, but wide area of brightness, it's just not possible. I'd have the, the modifier like down here and I'd have to be on this tiny little box just trying to get the shot to look normal while still shooting against this neutral background as I have it now. So sadly for my studio, having the 120D or the 300D in the Aperture Light Dome, it's just not an option. Even having it in this 22 inch beauty dish, the 120D is still too long to have, you know, any kind of decent headroom in this space, in this setting. And the thing is that with a lot of corporate work, you're often going to be in situations where you don't have access to a studio sized room, a proper studio sized room with big ceilings, not like mine. And so just as this setup doesn't work in my studio, this setup is unlikely to work well for you if you need overhead lighting in an office space. And that is the number one reason why I was keen to try out the Soonwell. The Soonwell allows me to mount the light much closer to the ceiling because it's not a deep modifier because it's a flat LED panel, it's actually only about, what, five inches from the LEDs to that diffusion material. But because the panel itself is so wide and the diffusion material is so wide, it allows you to still get that wide diffused source of light, which means nice soft light. And to be honest, I think with a little bit of DIY on the frame that it comes attached to, I could even shave off a couple more inches there to get it even closer to the ceiling giving me that extra little bit of headroom on top of what it's already giving me, just so I can really get that overhead diffused look. Now granted, this is a little bit harsh of a look. I wouldn't want to just light someone like this, but it's really handy if you want to be using it as a fill light for your hair, for your shoulders, just to give a little bit of, of separation to you, the subject, versus your background. And you would have your key light positioned as you normally would for an interview. So sort of at a kind of 45 degree angle from the subject, just elevated, pointing down with a big flat diffused surface. But I thought I'd set it up like this to show you really just how obvious it is what I'm trying to say. So for me, that was really the number one thing that intrigued me about trying this light out versus something like the Aperture 120D or the 300D was getting that extra flexibility towards the ceiling so that I just have more options when it comes to lighting a subject for a photo shoot, for a corporate interview, for a creative shoot, for anything. Now you might be thinking, look, that's completely irrelevant to me. I've got really tall ceilings, you lucky bastard. I just wanna know what the light is like. Well, that's what I'm getting to next. The panel itself is really light in weight. And the reason for that is that all of the controls are not actually in the panel. All of the controls are over in the control box. 
air traffic controller. But essentially what that means is that the light itself is really small, really light in weight, and it's flexible and it doesn't really heat up. It doesn't need a fan to cool it, which means that if you've got that light right above you and a shotgun mic right beside it, you're not gonna have any problems with recording audio and hearing that kind of hissing of a silent fan like you do on the aperture units. No, it's gonna be completely quiet. Then on the controller, you've got the option of color temperature and brightness and they can either be controlled by the touchscreen or by the dials. Now, personally, these dials drove me a little bit crazy because they're way too sensitive and then they're not sensitive enough, if that makes any sense. You start dialing it in one direction and it doesn't really follow that same pace that you are dialing at. It kind of jumps around and then it'll like reverse back 10% and then jump ahead 20%. It's completely wild, but it's good for very fast changes in brightness or color temperature if you need to make them quickly. But the touchpad is a lot more smooth, a lot more responsive. Uh, it just doesn't dial up as fast as the dial would, but then it's a lot easier to be precise with it. So you can get an exact color temperature or an exact brightness dialed in pretty easily. There's also a remote control wireless channel setup on there uh, so that I guess you could use two units at the same time or three units or multiple units and control them all with the remote control but Soonwell didn't include that so I can't comment on how it works. Might work well, might not work well and I don't know what exactly you can control with it if you can control brightness and color temperature or just brightness. I don't know. Like with many of these LED lights, you have the control unit, which will be just a big chunky metal thing. And then you will have the actual power converter separately so that it doesn't overheat. Because when it starts overheating with electrical components, that's, that's when you run into problems. So this one follows that same pattern and it has a V-mount plate on the back. So you can add a V-mount battery if you want it to be shooting away from any power sources, like if you're in the woods and you needed flexible LED lights above you. Now, there are a few things that irritate me about this light. The controller, the accessories, the frame, etc. First of all, this thing that it comes with. This is essentially so that you can put the back of the bracket of the light in there so that you can have it facing, you know, downwards. But then that's as far as it'll allow you to rotate this. Meaning that that is as steep as you can have your light. You can't have it overhanging like that unless you have a light stand that can bend itself that has another axis of rotation or articulation. So that's a little bit annoying, but then I'm not using it. As you can see, it's suspended over me because I'm actually just using one of the nice little wing nut clamp things that came with my newer heavy duty stands because they're just a lot more reliable than this. Okay, the second thing that kind of annoys me with this is just how ridiculously large the control unit is. It's so unnecessarily big. And I understand that they need it to be big because they need it to stay cool, because it's powering all these LEDs, which means it's gonna get hot and they need it to act as a heat sink, which is why it's got that nice little metal frame around it. But it's just so big. It's so ridiculously big. The other thing that doesn't really make sense to me is that the mount for the control unit is on the bottom, not on the top. So essentially you have to have the control unit upside down with the wrong cables going the wrong way. So you're losing probably all in all about a meter, maybe half a meter in actual cable extension, extension, cable extension, because the whole control unit has to be the wrong way. But easy workaround for that, just Velcro it to your light stand or tie it to your light stand or clamp it to your light stand, whatever you wanna do and that way you can have the cables going in the right direction. And then the third thing that's just a little bit inconvenient is that the cable between the LEDs and the controller unit, not all that long. And it's not something that you can just easily buy another cable for and replace it like an XLR. And the cable itself attaches in the middle. It's not detachable from the LEDs and from the control unit, which means that you can't just easily get a whole new cable that's much longer and run it from the LEDs to the control unit. You have to match one that can essentially add as an extension between the two parts that are attached to either unit, which is, it's just a bit of a pain. Luckily for me, I don't have the situation right now where, you know, I'm, I'm running out of cable length, but I could see myself running into that situation, in which case I'd want to try and source an extension that can just make that lead a lot longer. But I've got to say, I really like this light. I think it just, it allows me to do something that I can't do with any of the other lights that I have in the studio, 
And so for that reason, I'm going to keep it and I'm going to use it. I'm just gradually making all these tutorials and reviews just look that, that little extra bit better. All right. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you found this useful. I hope this is the kind of review you were looking for about the Sunwell. There's a link in the description. If you want to buy it using that link, it will give me 3% of an affiliate commission. It won't charge you anything extra. It'll charge Amazon. And it means that you can help support this channel. All right, leave any questions you have in the comment section. I'll see you next time. Cheers.